Wow, this hallway took a whole week to load. Gosh. <laughs> oh man. It's, it's somehow it turned into a labyrinth. It wasn't like that when I went in. <laughs> but on the way out, oh boy, got real lost. You heard what they said on TV. Avalanche is working for full time. But I thought we weren't. I sure hope this cat to our gun's got a silver ticket inside. A silver ticket means you get a piece for free. And a gold. I sure wish this gum would give me more I gum. <laughs> It's funny walking through this area because Final Fantasy, ever since 12, has had a lot of production issues. A lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of, oh, before I talking more about that, you know how I was talking about graphical issues? This NPC's textures takes forever to load in and will, like, unload every time there's a camera angle change. Somebody help me! And so he looks like fucking trash. <laughs> I hate him. He's supposed to be wearing pants. I hate this scared man. Shinra weapons are on the rampage. Sure. Five of them, like floating eyeballs. I saw them wander off into the scrap, but if they come back into town, it'd be a disaster. We need someone who's willing and able to fight. So, do you think this means I'll handle it. Coming? You will? Oh man, you're the best! I could hear them shouting intruder detected or some other nonsense when they floated off. Be careful, they look dangerous. Sure, hope not. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Goodbye, scared man. He doesn't look that scared. No, he's fine now. I've, I've so eased his fears, maybe. Ah, yes. Yeah. I'll beat up those <laughs> monsters. But yeah, Final Fantasy's been in a weird spot for a long time. 13 had a lot of weird production issues, and it just was a really not great, messy game. 14 came out with so notoriously bad that they brought in completely different, like, directors and stuff to fix the game. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's a completely different game now. It's actually good now, but it was literally that bad that the original version of 14 has like an apocalypse that kind of sort of soft resets the plot. Um, and 15 was a game announced in 2007 or 8 and was a spin-off Final Fantasy that they went, fuck, it's taking forever to make a Final Fantasy. Let's just make this 15. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 oh. oh. But there's an infamous quote from around the time 13 was being made, which was, oh, and the monsters you have to look for is just in somewhere in this circle. They don't actually tell you where. Just yeah, gotta yeah. Hunt for them. Um, 13 is notorious for being extremely linear to the point that it's, it's basically just straight hallways with a lot of decoration around it. Mm -hmm. You never get to settle down in towns or anything like that, which is, you know, a big part of JRPGs and stuff. It's like, oh, you get to visit cool different towns and see what's going on and all that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There was a developer quote saying, like, HD towns are hard. That's why there aren't any in 13. And so it's really funny to play this remake, and there's multiple very highly detailed cities yeah, that you can visit yeah. full of NPCs and side quests. It's like, no, you could do it. It's just. I mean, you could do it now, but that was now. then. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta work out the pipeline. You gotta, you, you know, prioritize. Yeah. J Japanese developers had a very hard time transitioning to HD development, which was the real issue there. But yeah, Aerith's new weapon, we just finished upgrading that. Uh, it's got upgrades to increase how much certain elements do damage-wise. Uh, so that's a pretty good weapon to go to when you really want to focus on staggering stuff or going after enemies' weaknesses. Ah, okay. Yeah. And like I mentioned the previous episode, uh, we've got this Whistlewind Scarf to boost how much ATB Aerith starts with in battle. Uh, we're going to stack that with the first strike materia. So she'll have, she can just pop off a magic spell right away and still have a little bit of ATB left to, to build on. Now we can finally start unlocking some shortcuts. <laughs> Back to earlier areas. That's how you know it's a real video game. Yeah, you can go backwards. <laughs> it, it is very funny how much just being able to go backwards and maybe find I've a single this. thing in a corner <laughs> like adds value that? to people for video games. Yeah. I have a mental log of all those lorbs you left behind. Uh huh. Aerith's new ability is Sorceress Storm. Uh, it makes lightning bolts crash down around here. Ooh. It's really short range, but it is like an area of effect thing. So if you can run into like a group of enemies, it's really good for that. Yeah. 
Especially if they're robots. Yeah. Well, while it does look like lightning, it's actually non-elemental. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, fuck robots. <laughs> it still does, like, a pretty high amount of, like, magic damage, though. All right, so... You know, might have seen these guys before. This is a different variation of the, mm -hmm. the weird mono mm -hmm. drives. These guys are kind of hard. They're big and beefy and uh, kind of kind of hard to deal with. They can put up different types of shields that either completely nullify physical or magic damage. Okay. And you have you can only break that shield by hitting it with the opposite type of attack. So the green shield, immune to magic, got to hit it with a lot of physical attacks to eventually break it. Mm -hmm. So these guys are weak to wind because they're floating, of course. And you can also grab uh, Turbo Ethers from them. And even if you manage to steal only like one or two, you're set for a while with those those MP heals. And like the 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 Chogs, they have a lot of fire spells that they uh, they either fire off one at a time, or they will all link up together to all fire a sing their own fire spells at a single target, like together. Oh no! Oh no! Yeah, the fire can mess you up pretty quickly if you're not paying attention. Uh, again, don't try to dodge that much in this game. Just block. It's, it's way you. better. Here goes. But the real problem here is that these guys have an attack where they will burrow underground where you can't hit them, and they'll stay there for a while until they eventually pop up right from underneath you. <laughs> uh, and that does a lot of damage to you, and it's really easy to lose track of the ones that are underground until they pop up and hurt you. Like that, like so. Yeah. You know, you gotta Can demonstrate you all these things. <laughs> it's it's honestly, I have a hard time not getting hit by it. Come on. <sighs> but yeah, they also have one other ability where they uh they can augment their shields even more. Where uh they'll either they'll basically be completely immune to magic and also highly resistant to physical attacks. So they basically take almost no damage until you break the shield. Okay. My turn. Steady. Yeah, this is a... Uh, right around this point in the game is when the enemies kind of stop messing around as much, and <laughs> it actually gets kind of dangerous. All right. and they're also a little hard to, to stagger, because uh, they don't get pressured too much, and... Uh, That's that. You really got to hit them with, with wind spells. But at least we're making Chadley happy, and I think that's the most important thing right now. Yeah. You're still doing okay, right? One shot. Also, I like that they, they put in a bunch of chatter uh, for party members, like, asking each other if they're okay and shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm coming! I'll take care of you. And unfortunately, uh, nice. Yeah. Oh no, not nice. Yeah, you can parry this, but because they move so fast, you usually whiff it. Um, I'll show you what I can do. So we've only seen uh, using summons a couple of times so far. Um, summons can't be brought up in just any fight. This is a fight where you could bring bring them in, but um, so certain summons are deemed. Um, they can only appear in certain fights. And that's because it's right. like, oh, if you're fighting a boss fight, like, yeah, Ifrit can show up. Um, if it's weaker enemies, it's only weaker summons can get brought in, usually. Oh, that's um, rude. Um, like, there's some summons that are, like, smaller and can, can come into, like, easier battles. Um, but there's shot. another limitation to summons, and this is how it worked in 15, too. Sometimes you might be having a boss down. fight in a small enclosed space, and some of the summons in this game are really big. If you're fighting <laughs> it, if you are fighting in a place where that summon could not physically fit, you cannot summon them there. They gotta have space to like fit in the room. Just world-shaking power, mastery over the elements. Weak to architecture. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, one contractor can just okay. ruin your whole day. Mm -hmm. I'll show you what I can do. Oh, bug bites. Here we go. That wasn't that You're a pretty bad bodyguard if you keep letting bugs eat the lady. 
Don't do that, Cloud. It's payback for all the humiliation he's had to take. <laughs> if you don't stop being nice to me, I'm gonna let Bugs eat you. <laughs> stop, just stop making fun little cute jabs at me. I can't handle it. Quit being pleasant, damn it. Uh, uh. But yeah, it's funny seeing both comments in our Let's Plays and in other places, uh, just how many people think Tifa's and Aerith's personalities are the Let's opposite go. of what they actually are. Yeah. And honestly, I think you. people were probably expecting Tifa to act even more like uh, Jesse than Aerith at this point, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They did a lot you of new stuff with Jesse in this game. She didn't really have much of a personality to work with from the original. <laughs> I brought it up a couple episodes ago, but it's very funny seeing something that's this old get brought back to the forefront and old fans coming back and new fans too, because it brings up a lot of really old fandom stuff into the limelight again <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that has felt dormant. It's the same as like, um, it's like when uh, Evangelion came on Netflix and everyone was talking about Eva again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it was a new thing and it's just like, oh God, like all the like old guard people who have like crosses to bear regarding like character ships, it's back and it's relevant yes, again. Yes. 700 foot crosses to bear in that case, but. <laughs> yeah. The same thing happened with this, and it was very weird, because I, I experienced all that stuff, like, when it was fresh. <laughs> and seeing everything devolve into, like, 1997 GameFAQs message boards was... weird. I heard, I heard, you got them all, right? Robots from the reactor getting lost in the slums. Must be because of the explosion up top, huh? They must have thought they were protecting the reactor, and figured I was trespassing on their turf or something. Maybe. Almost feel sorry for him, getting all lost and confused like that. Oh, what am I saying? Man or machine? Shin or bitches get what they deserve. Now hold on. Anyway, I think it's safe to say our work here is finished. If you're ever in the market for a merc again, remember, you can count on Cloud. Uh, sure. And sorry about putting this on you all of a sudden. I'm really glad you were willing to help out, though. Thanks again. Actually, while you're here, I've got another favor to ask. There's this old guy who hangs out in front of the weapons shop. I think he might need your help. Would you mind talking to him? He gave us a pair of protective boots. Looks like he could use them. This is a pretty useful accessory that you can't get until later normally. Uh, it makes you immune both to the slow and stop status effects. Ah. We haven't even met anything that can inflict stop on us yet, but yeah, if you get hit by that, your character just freezes in time. <laughs> imagine, imagine, mm -hmm. like there's a huge terrorist attack. People are thinking it's a front for a foreign invasion. And in the middle of the news report, the anchor just mentions the chance of rain this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know you. You must be that mercenary. I have a problem. It's the anniversary of my wife's death, and I wanted to visit her grave. But I can't because some creatures have turned the graveyard into their nest. Could you do me a favor and go there in my stead? She shouldn't be alone today. It'll cost you. That's fine, that's fine. The graveyard's right by the head of the river. But I heard they put a new gate in recently to replace the old broken one. Now that those creatures have moved in, I'm sure it's locked up tight. Didn't we buy a graveyard key off Moggy? I think we did. There you go. No idea why Moggy has that key, but we got it. Yeah, I honestly forget, like, if you don't get the graveyard key before this, if there's a hint as to where to get it or not. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty hard to miss. You want to see what Moggy's, what Moggy mm -hmm. is peddling. Obviously. Yeah. Now you can handle yourself. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this weapon shop, like, being in this this van is from the original. Though it, it did change a little bit in a way as, uh... I wish it 
it kept in that uh, the guy in the original game who ran this weapon shot shop, he lived in there too. Uh-huh. So you would uh-huh. walk, you would actually walk inside this van where he's selling shit. But you can also see like a sh- one really tiny shitty futon in there. <laughs> I like that that he was like living out of that place too. There's a good amount of kids in this town who are all wearing fanny packs too. <laughs> glad that glad that fanny pack fashion is here. Guy's still waiting for a rousing speech from the president. He seems pretty roused all on its own. Yeah, just the thought, really. Hey, Chadley. I don't know if this speech can really measure up to like the speech in his head. You know? <laughs> yeah. I have to tell you that I'm grateful for all of your help thus far. I've done it. I've developed a new materia. So yeah, that that mission that we just finished was one for uh, beating different monster variations. Those model drives for the third one we needed. Mm-hmm. Um, while some imagining Chadley's backpack is so big, is he just like walking to all these places we're finding him? He must just be backpacking. Those are just, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He's exploring. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's just a lot of supp- like sandwiches in there to keep him going. So yeah, all we got left is to fight Shiva here. Um, kind of easy to set up for her fight even before you've ever fought her because it makes it clear that she's ice themed. <laughs> <laughs> so just get ready to use a lot of fire. Um, and also I was increasing uh, upgrading Cloud's uh, magic stat because uh, you just want to use fire spells a lot. Yeah, yeah. Need, need more magic. And also Shiva being like a floating ice lady. She's all magic based, so you don't even really need to worry about having good physical defense stats, so just boost magic. <laughs> um, but yeah, we... Uh, we got one more materia from Chadley here. Um, it is yet the another synergy materia. Yeah, synergy. Uh, synergy is another materia, like a few others we picked up, that works uh, when the character is being controlled by the AI. This is a blue materia, so it has to be linked up with something. But mm-hmm. so if we have this synergy materia, say linked up to a fire materia. If Cloud is being controlled by the, by the AI and he sees Aerith cast magic, he will cast whatever materia is linked to the synergy materia. Ah. So you can basically uh, like double, start double teaming stuff with magic automatically. Of course, this still requires Cloud to have like ATB and MP. It's not like he gets to cast a free spell or anything. Ah, uh, uh, nuts. Yeah, but it's still nice to uh, automate that stuff and... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, sometimes in this game, like, say we're fighting Shiva or something where it's like, oh, I really want to have a very specific loadout for this. You can't save, like, material loadouts, and that would be really handy, because sometimes it's like, I just need to make something for fighting this one specific boss and then go back to my normal loadout. <laughs> but you can't save that and easily switch back, so you have to, like, do this one by one. But really, aside from having a bunch of fire magic on you, you also just need to have the ice materia linked to an elemental materia on somebody's armor slot, just so that somebody at least is taking half damage from everything Shiva is dishing out. So I could have done the Shiva fight in the previous episode, but because Aerith wasn't in my party, uh, that would have been a solo fight, which is much harder to do. Maybe at some point further down the line, I'll show what a solo fight against Shiva is like. Chadley, let me in your brain. Then I invite you to ready your portable battle simulator. Take the lead. I'm coming. That's it. One more shot. No, I think it's going to take more than that. Yeah. Needs more magic. All right. So I put the protective boots on Cloud because uh, when Shiva's moving around, she leaves this ice trail behind. Uh, And if you touch that, Ah. yeah, you're going to get hit with slow when you step on it. Uh, not as much of a problem with Aerith, because she can just stand far away, but 
Yeah, sometimes uh, Shiva will uh, mo draw a whole circle around the arena and then she'll sit inside the middle of the ice trail. So there's like no way to get close to her without touching it and getting slowed. Which is rude. Yeah, it's, it kind of sucks. Makes the first fight with Shiva, your first playthrough, kind of tough. Uh, but if, if we scan her... Uh, she's the manifestation of a queen who once healed the planet's wound with ice, as evidenced by the existence of permafrost in the polar lands. That's what that means. That's, That's what that, that means. means. Um, Shiva, along with Ifrit, is like one of the most common recurring summons in Final Fantasy. She's basically mm -hmm. always a floating giant ice lady. With the exception <laughs> of Final Fantasy 13, where she's two robot ice ladies who scissor so that they can combine <laughs> into a motorcycle? And yeah, then, video games are art, and then in this, fact. This dumb asshole rides them around? Oh man, 13 is really dumb. <laughs> uh. Imagine the core strength to be able to maintain <laughs> motorcycle form. Oh man. What's even worse is because the way they're combined, like one of their faces is right in the guy's crotch when he's sitting on them. <laughs> it's so bad. You gotta make sure he does his laundry regularly. <laughs> um, yeah, Shiva, she's all ice attacks. Um, sometimes she shoots out an ice trail that homes in on you. If you get hit by it, you get put to sleep. And whoever's get uh, asleep, she will make a giant icicle hover over them and then eventually drop it on their heads while they can't move. Oh no. Yeah. But hey, we got we just cast fire spells. Cloud uh, is casting fire magic now. But he cast four spells in a row. That's because <laughs> Aerith did a double cast. Both of those yes. count as a trigger for synergy. And because Cloud had two ATV charges and he was in the magic circle, four fire spells right in a row. It's a really fun combination of abilities. That's very good. That's very good. Oh, look at these. And the snowflakes are not alike. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So that those snowflake orbs, uh, that's an ability she casts when she starts losing some health. Every each one of those orbs completely nullifies a single fire spell. I'll show you what I can do. So even though she's weak to fire, she's got some ways to, to mitigate that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's your turn. Hey, but yeah, I love this fight for doing this this fun setup here, like getting everybody to full ATB with synergy and just laying into her with a ton of fire spells all in a row. Like look how much damage she takes from this. <laughs> like it is Absurd. I can almost kill her in one go this way. Keep up the pressure, okay? Oh, she's pressured, all right. Yeah. yeah. Keep it together. Well, I mean, she was. If Cloud was also able to cast uh, Fyra spells instead of fire, she would have died from that. <laughs> but yeah, once she gets lower on health, she starts charging up this Diamond Dust move. This is the move she does in every Final Fantasy. If you summon her, she does Diamond Dust. Um, this is a unavoidable cutscene attack. Some bosses can actually do this. So <laughs> whenever bosses start charging up something like this, it's clearly unavoidable and you need to either heal or get defenses up. All of her attacks are magic based, so Mana Ward and Cloud, since Aerith is already cutting ice damage by half. Mm -hmm. Also, I can't really make him do anything yet because I'm about to get hit with the cutscene attack. But hey, let's just bring Ifrit in. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You can hit me with a middle fire antlers all you want, but this is a cutscene, so like. <laughs> yeah, if you're not uh, reducing ice damage or, you know, have some type of magic shield up or anything, that does about a thousand points of damage to everybody. Is that it? <laughs> it can definitely, if you're not looking out for it, kill you. Outstanding! The Shiva summoning materia is complete. And now it's yours. Use it as you see fit. The Lady of Frost is the perfect companion for a man like you, Cloud. She will prove most useful when the time comes to destroy Shinra. What are you saying about me, Chadley? I mean, she's gigantic, and you're into that. Oh, okay. I can tell, Mr. Cloud. 
See, that's the problem with Tifa, Jesse, and Aerith. None of them are big enough. They're, they're all just regular human size. Yeah. Now, that lady that was on the TV... Hell yeah. But you know, you meet him in person, <laughs> not, it's not all smoke and mirrors. Thing. Yeah, it's true. It's just special effects that makes her look that big. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the angle of the cameraman real low, you know? <laughs> Gramps fucking hates the reactors. <laughs> I've been waiting for those things to blow up! Yeah, you know what the neighborhood watch hates? Avalanche. <laughs> Got bad news, ladies. want a tour of the Shinra <laughs> building for their honeymoon! Maybe Shinra has a really cool building in Costa del Sol. Mm. Maybe their building is very romantic. <laughs> Eric, you're back! One day. Come, look what we've done with the flowers! Like Lovely, don't you think? Great job. That's wonderful. <sighs> Isn't it? Oh, I nearly forgot. I saw some Shinra suit walking towards your house a little while ago. He was dressed all in black. A little scary looking. You know, if we just don't go down there, maybe he'll just get tired and leave. Yeah, he'll just... Maybe he'll wait so long that he strikes up a conversation with your mom. One thing mm. leads to another. We've made a friend. You all right? Feel free to come back anytime and enjoy the flowers. Angry Baldy Man wouldn't attack his his own stepdaughter or her best bodyguard friend. So exactly. A lot of time on this. Look at the detail. So yeah, here's the other ones you can get. The one on the right with the cactuar, that's if you use all foxtails. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh it just changes the decorations and sometimes so there's and, two chocobo ones? Uh there's chocobo and then there's Moogle and then there's Cactuar. Okay. Yeah. I love um, but yeah, the only other difference is that sometimes NPCs will come by and make different comments based on what the decorations are. Oh. You're that former soldier, aren't you? Cloud, was it? Former soldier turned problem solver. Are you okay, Miss Folia? You look upset. Uh, yeah, I am pretty upset. The kids are still off doing patrols, even though it's now time for their lessons. Not a single one of them has come back yet. Patrols? Is that a leaf house thing? Something they do to help out? That's right. In return for the donations we receive, the kids go around town picking up litter, running errands, that kind of thing. I don't suppose you've seen any of them, have you? <sighs> you see, I have some important plans this evening, and I really need to go and get ready. Would you like us to go round them up? Oh, that would be wonderful. There are five of them out on patrol right now. They all wear homemade swords on their backs, so they should be easy to spot. Like, her hairstyle would look cool if her hair looked like hair. Yeah. Instead, it, it looks like somebody put, like, shoe polish on a fern. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, the NPCs aren't going to be of the same graphical quality as the main characters, but... Mm -hmm. Ago when I came to Midgar, the plate you see. Long ago when the Sector 6 plate fell, everybody thought it was the end. The plate fell out of the sky? Just that once, and it'll never happen again. Wow! You're that soldier, right? Can I ask you a super important question? I heard bad people broke the Mako reactor, and there's gonna be another war because of it. Is that true? Who knows? But isn't there something else you should be worrying about right now? I forgot about Miss Folia's lesson! I gotta head back to the house! And yeah, the kids are pretty easy to find. 
Uh, obviously, aside from the freaking mm. oh. quest markers that are over their heads or the talk icon over them, they all have like little wooden buster swords on them, which is kind of cute. I like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Although it makes me wonder, did they just now make those? <laughs> How goes the patrol? There's a lot more people on the streets than usual. Maybe because the reactor blew up? Well, you've been keeping a very sharp lookout. But don't you think you're forgetting something important? Oh, Miss Foley of Lessons! I gotta get back to the house! Oh right, I'm supposed to be on the roof. Damn it. <laughs> I really wish like the instant he left, somebody walked through here and got mugged. <laughs> I'd be down with a subplot of Detective Child trying to catch Mugger Child. That'd be a good side quest. Oh, so we walked by those people at the restaurant talking about mm -hmm. honeymooning shit, and they talked about Costa del Sol. Yeah. Uh, this shop is playing Costa del Sol music. Oh. It's a little bossa nova thing. No new materia at the shops or anything yet, but I do want to get a second HP up just so I can start leveling another one of those up. Because mm -hmm. whenever... No materia, no life. No materia, no life. Oh, yeah, I just bought materia for more life. <laughs> uh, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Because whenever we get Barrett back, I want to make him the beefiest dude alive. More HP ups. Chadley. Chadley. Hey there, how goes the patrol? Great, I've been picking up garbage and giving people directions. Plus I helped an old lady cross the street. You've been busy. It's a normal day for me. Gotta work hard. The house depends on people's donations. Oh no, I'm late. Did you see Miss Folia? Is she mad? Oh, I gotta go. I'm sorry. I also think it is funny, like, I know that they're just getting TV from, like, the upper plate, but it is funny to even get the idea of a weather forecast down here <laughs> when they're just covered mostly. Oh, you scared me. Hey there, how goes the patrol? I've been watching them really close. I'm trying to learn all about the business. You want to open up a shop of your own someday? Yeah, so I can earn lots of money and use it to help the house. The teachers don't like to talk about it, but we know the donations aren't enough to keep things running. Uh, but that's a secret, okay? I'm not supposed to tell anyone. Anyway, I gotta go study. I'm not supposed to tell anyone I know I'm poor. <laughs> Bye! The TV regularly shames being poor. It is. It's a fucking moment when you grow up and you realize, oh shit, I was poor. Yeah. <laughs> I think a, about that. Yeah. It's a real, like, the first time it hits you. Hello, Cloud. Sir, it's a real honor to meet you. I think you soldier guys are awesome. I want to be strong and tough when I grow up, too. You sound very determined. These are dangerous times. A reactor blew up and a bunch of kids lost their friends and families. Who knows what might blow up next? I guess that means more children might be coming to the house soon. And I think the teachers are going to have a whole lot more work to do. Speaking of teachers, Miss Foley is looking for you. Oh man, I completely forgot! I have to get back right now! That's everyone. Let's go back to the house. Cloud, don't you think it says something that the only missing kids are your biggest fans? <laughs> are you a bad influence, Cloud? Are you... are you bad? I'm a cool influence. <laughs> For longest time, like, I was... When I played this game, I was just like, what What are these things they are looking at? And it took me forever to... Are they washing machines? Yeah, they're washing machines. It okay. took me forever to realize what they were. Like, if you do walk closer to them, you can hear them running. <laughs> and eventually people do, like, bitch about having to do laundry and stuff. It's just, I never heard it. 
Everybody's looking at Cloud's back, thinking, D I gotta fucking make a new wooden sword. Oh, the children finally came back, thanks to you two. You've been a great help. Okay, everyone, come inside. It's time to hit the books. <sighs> you guys, the Toad King's back. I saw him near the hideout. We gotta do something about him. The Toad King? A weird, creepy monster we've seen near the hideout lately. He wears a crown and walks around like he owns the place. If he's not a king, he's gotta be monster royalty at least. I bet a soldier could beat him up easy. Oh yeah, real easy. But here's the thing, I don't work for free. Or cheap. But we don't have any money! The watch wouldn't ask for money. But if we ask any other grown-ups for help, they'll find out about the hideout, and that'll be it. We really don't want to lose the hideout. Come on, help us. Oh, and we'll give you some cool treasure if you do. And if that's not enough, I'll pay the rest of your fee once I open my shop. Well, if you won't help, then we'll just have to kill it ourselves. <sighs> I'll do it for three gil. Huh? I'm offering a special discount right now on Toad King jobs. Looks like it's your lucky day. Awesome! Now that's my kind of bargain. I wish you luck, brave warrior. His heart drew three sizes that day. <laughs> yeah, again, just like with the Sector 7 slimes, Chadley. you didn't... Chadley. Uh, you didn't have any... Uh, there weren't any side quests here. Mm -hmm. Same as with Sector 7 in the original. Um, and while the Sector 7 some side quests are mostly just kind of an extended combat tutorial, I kind of like the, the ones for this area more because uh, you kind of get more familiar with, like, the community of the town <laughs> through these yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the way they, they seem to chain, you know, one leads to the next to the next. Moggy's kind of interesting, huh? He's weird, but he makes everyone around him really happy. You'll see. Yeah. After Sector, Sector 7, pretty much all the side quests are a little more like this, where they're, they're a little bit more story-based. Maybe not something like a, a Witcher 3 thing, but um, I still appreciate what they, they do for letting you get more familiar with different areas. By the way, Summoning Materia DLC. Yes? You could only get these if you pre-ordered the game. You still can't buy these? All of these summons are... They aren't as good as the summons you get naturally throughout the game. Right. Um, they, they're not 40 foot tall ice ladies. Yeah. But yeah, throughout these side quests, I'm going to try and show off some of these, these summons because I'm not going to use them too much after I show them off when I could just summon ice lady or bird and bear. There was some other DLC for this game that you can actually purchase now, and that was all of the Butterfinger promotional DLC. <laughs> have not talked about how Final Fantasy VII had a cross-promotion with fucking Butterfinger Ball things. So, so there's a, a Bart Simpson summon materia out there. Uh, yeah. I, I'm just, some, like, was the thought process just, well, hey, the, the edge of the Butterfinger wrapper is pointy and spiky and yellow like Cloud Strife's hair. <laughs> I don't know if that was a thought process or what, but... Wait, is that why it's Bart Simpson? I think so. Oh it my might god. Be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this isn't a game. I learned something today and I don't like it. Yeah, I I I don't actually know for sure, but that's always what I thought as a kid even. Like, oh mm -hmm. it's gotta be because of Bart Simpson. But uh, so yeah, we gotta fight the Toad King, who is a uh, special like mini boss version of the hedgehog pies. The, the taxonomy in this whole game is, is very challenging. <laughs> oh, look at him boogie. Yeah, I, I, have to, I have to like actually freeze his footage so we can actually get a good look at him. He's wearing a little crown he found in the trash. Oh, someone abdicated very dramatically. <laughs> and I like that he's got like those tally mark scars on his stomach. Mm -hmm. um, That's how many times he survived triple slash. Yeah. Yeah, he can cast slow on people, so we get, still got the boots on Cloud for that. Uh, he can put people to sleep. Um, he also has this protection move that he constantly casts on the other two Hedgehog Pies that gives them uh, 
both resistance to physical and magic attacks. And these Hedgehog Pies also get regen on them, so they're constantly gaining health. And these Hedgehog Pies also have a new move called Bounce, where they just they just found fucking bounce in your head over and over. Yeah, it's their homing attack, sure. Yeah. And uh, if you get hit by it, like, it stun locks you, and it can knock you out of your attacks and stuff. Kind of a, a difficult fight, because everyone's just constantly healing themselves and has high defense and all that. Mm -hmm. Go on. <laughs> and just constantly casting the, the protection spell. But, uh... So yeah, in fights where summoning is possible, uh, the summon gauge appears for two different reasons. Either it's because somebody in your party gets really low on health, or it's because you stagger an enemy. Uh -huh. uh, this is kind of different from... Final... This is like a more polished version of how it worked in Final Fantasy XV. In XV, <laughs> it was just like, oh, are you getting your ass kicked? Okay, well, someone is here, and it's going to instantly win the fight for you now. And it would... And because of that, it's like, if you're playing the game okay for most of the game, you almost never saw the summons. Right, right. Which was a shame. They were really cool in that game, actually. But yeah, we're gonna summon the Chocobo Chick. Hell yeah. I love to summon chicks. You willing to step up for us? I call forth a baby. <laughs> there he is. What does the baby do? Um, so the baby... It's got one of every type of elemental spell, but ah. um, there's that little circular symbol with an arrow pointing out of it and all of them. That means it's a multi-target spell, so it'll hit everything. Now, when you command it to do, like, a spell, it'll be... A, it'll do a decent amount of damage, but after you command it to do that, it will shoot much weaker versions of that spell on its own. So, like, giving it a command also switches what it element its basic attack is, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This guy is pretty useful if you use him right at the start of the game. Like, all the DLC summon materia is available even before you're given Ifrit. Like, okay. right from the start of Chapter 2, when you can equip materia, you have these guys. And yeah, he leaves with one, like, big explosion. He, he's okay at the start of the game. At this point, like, you <laughs> know, Really, you would only some of him just like, wow, I just really want to see a baby bird. <laughs> That's what I need right now. I don't need assistance in battle. I just want to see a baby bird. Just sort of a pick-me-up. Yeah. Nothing to it. Hey, kids. I destroyed your ruler. <laughs> you all worship the Toad King, right? You're free now. <laughs> Did you defeat the Toad King? Yep. Kicked his butt real good. Awesome! I knew you could do it! Now we don't have to worry about the king and his smelly friends! Thank you so much! Here, this is for you. The treasure we promised. It's definitely worth at least three gil. Okay, kids. Playtime's over for now. I've prepared a special assignment for everyone. One that I expect you to finish today. Understood? Uh, yes! Yes, Miss Folia! I appreciate you getting rid of the Toad King, by the way. Wow, Miss Folia. You must know all their secrets. Oh, if only. Easier said than done. They're always on the move, looking for new adventures, chasing new dreams. All while trying to make the lives of everyone around them just a little bit better. I try to make sure they don't stumble and fall. And when they finally do, I help them back up. <laughs> Sounds exhausting. <laughs> Sometimes it is. But I want the children to know that until they can stand on their own two feet, that I'm here to support them, care for them, love them. That even if we're not actually related, we're still a family. A real family, in all the ways that matter. If I can do that for them, then... Well, then maybe I'm making this world a better place. I know you are. My predecessor taught me everything I know. I just took up his torch and ran with it, I guess. Uh, not that I'm anything close to what he was. Biggs is one of a kind. <gasps> oh no! I've completely lost track of time! 
Do you have somewhere you need to be? More like a dream I need to fulfill. Thank you again for your help. I wonder what kind of dream she's chasing tonight. No idea. Thanks again for saving our hideout from the king. In return, I let everyone know you guys can join the game as special guests. If you want to know more, then come to the hideout. It feels good to help people out, doesn't it? Yeah. You having fun yet? Heaps. Then you can't be afraid to show it more. Don't forget, it's all about service and salesmanship. I'll leave that to you. All right. But don't think you can rely on me forever, mister. Wasn't planning to. That's good. Cause I command a very good salary. Who's paying who here? Wait, I'm very confused. <laughs> So yeah, we got two rewards from that. The first one being uh, a new weapon for Cloud, that kid's nail bat. Hell yes, hell yes. So the nail, uh, in the original Final Fantasy VII, every single party member had a joke weapon. Cloud's was the nail bat. Um, this is the only joke weapon that appears in this game. Uh, I'm sure they'll add the others later down the line. Um, We'll get to using the nail, nail bat more later. Um, it's kind of a kind of a gimmick weapon. No, uh, but it's pretty it's pretty fun to use. But it beats the living tar out of things. Yeah. Um, the other reward here is completing that side quest unlocks a mini game at the hideout. Ooh. Aerith, I hate it when you phase into me like that. <laughs> it feels weird. Are you one of those ghosts? <laughs> if you take off those ghost shawls, they just look like people? Mm. Now that things are starting to settle down a bit, we can finally play Whack-A-Box again. It's all thanks to you. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's this tired looking guy out by the community center. And I heard he was looking for some help. Shinra middle manager. <gasps> yeah, again. A lot of the side quests here chain into each other in a way that's, that's kind of satisfying. Um, yeah, we got some whack-a-box to do here. So one of the rules of whack-a-box is that mm -hmm. you can't use all of Cloud's abilities in them. You can only use Braver and then whatever uh, ability your currently equipped weapon has. So certain weapons are better for this minigame than others. Uh, triple Slash... A pretty decent ability for Whack-A-Box, it turns out. Oh, hey, Cloud. You're just in time for our favorite game, Whack-A-Box. You want in? It's super fun. The rules are easy. The person who whacks the most boxes is crowned champion of the hideout. We usually don't let adults play, but since you're cool, we're going to make a special exception just for you. Oh, boy. So we can, uh, every time you play this mini game, you get a Moogle medal, no matter what. Ooh. Um, but yeah, we need to beat 30,000 points to get all the prizes here. Time to just grind here and buy all them books. Maximum happiness. Yeah. Um, yeah, the prize at 30,000 points, the spectral cog wheel. How did the kids get a spectral cog wheel? Uh, is something we really want. That's, that's like from steampunk Ghostbusters. What the yeah. fuck? <laughs> So yeah, just break boxes, different point values, uh, boxes that are worth more points, take more damage to break. Um, Cloud's spit attack is very good at this minigame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're still you building go. up, you're still building up ATB and stuff to use abilities in this and, and all that. Uh, there's these orange boxes. Ooh, that's the good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Extra time. Um, two triple slashes is enough to break the, the 1,500 point boxes. Yeah, this is uh, not too hard. It just takes a couple runs to really figure out like what moves are the best for taking these out. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, this is a new minigame, original to the remake. Oh, uh, you mean the uh, original didn't have this physics engine? <laughs> no. But there were a couple minigames in the original, at least, that were still like that played more like action games. Let's do this. 
Yeah, I don't know. It's an alright minigame. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a fun time waster. It's it's a nice way to get Moogle medals. Um, but yeah, it'll be a while before we get buy any of those books from Magi. But those books uh, get you more skill points for weapons. Ah. And different books are uh, for different party members. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I personally have not done it, but I have seen people able to completely clear out every single box <laughs> in the minigame. Is there a special reward for that? Or? There is not. Ah. Well, personal satisfaction is its own reward. I guess so, yeah. No achievement or anything either. It's just a, just a personal challenge, I guess. There you go, somewhere in there. Yeah. <laughs> so you're done. You can just like sit for the next I, 13 I could just, seconds. Yeah, I could just sit. I wish that you got like a something extra for for beating, like based on how high you go over the top score. But yeah, I don't know. A second Moogle medal. A, yeah, a second Moogle medal. Sure, for breaking your record. That would be nice. Or money or something. I don't know. The kids don't have money. That, that would break That's immersion. That's true. That's right. The kids are very poor. The, the kids are poor and they know it. Yeah. Take that, children. <laughs> Give me all your shit. Anyway, uh, with all the talk about postal banking, it rem uh, reminded me of all the times that, like, I would go to the post office for money orders for my parents to pay the bills, mm. and then I remember, oh shit, my parents didn't have a checking account. <laughs> oh shit. Yep. <laughs> Maybe next time I'll actually help an adult. I don't know. They they seem kind of testy. The last adult you helped didn't have his proper skin on. <laughs> that's true. And the other one wants us to go to a graveyard, and that's I don't know. It's depressing. We got enough ghost problems. I can't wait to hear yeah. what the has to and no one wants to acknowledge the ghosts. 